What's up team? Got episode 2 coming at you today. I'm gonna have Mr. Dylan Walker of... Ragged. Should be fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a pretty good time. We're gonna be doing it in his band room. Should be a sweet setup. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully the video goes this time, eh? Catch you later, eh? Hi, you folks. Here we <laughs> here we are at uh, episode two of Scruffy Chinwags: A Remedy for Curiosity. I've got my guest today, Dylan Walker. Hello. Pleasure to have you, mate. Fantastic Cheers, mate. To be here. Actually, this is my band room. So <laughs> no. <laughs> Pleasure to have Thanks you here. For, thank you for inviting me into your band room. In, into my safe space. Yeah. Oh wow. So you just want to give us a quick rundown of who the fuck you are, mate? Uh, I'm Dylan Walker. Yeah. Uh, I say a casual musician, definitely yeah. not full time. <laughs> full time, claim it. I don't want to be full time. Mm -hmm. As soon as you make something full time, it's a chore, and then you're mm, gonna you go. get bored of it quickly. But um, yeah, playing a band with the t-shirt that you're wearing is us. Ragged. Ragged. Great band. Um, yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know if I do much else. You uh, live it. You live here in live, the beautiful yeah, Dunedin. Yeah, I live in Dunedin currently. Uh, currently a stunner outside. It is. We should have been outside. You get too many cars driving past. Yeah. And and then mass traffic problems here. And people yelling at each other. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of lot oh of I problems. Can't give me back my baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you need that baby? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, very good. So ragged the band. Let's just we'll quickly start off there. Mm -hmm. We're in your band room. This is where you practice. Yeah. You like it? The dojo, the the band room, or the yeah, band, you like or the, the band room, the band. Fuck the band, the band room, bro. I love the band room. Uh, it's a it's nice been space. good. Like we we've been jamming here the last couple of nights, which is more productive uh, than we normally are. We just uh, sort of swap around, change instruments, get different ideas off different people, fresh ideas. I like that. The band, fucking love them. <laughs> <laughs> They're all great and and in all their different ways. Five pieces, isn't it? There's five. Five. Uh, yeah, there's five of us. So you got you me. singer. Uh, so no, you got Reese that sings. Yeah. Um, George that plays bass and does a bit of backing vocals. You got Jackson, Jason, Jensen, Rodica on drums, and then you got uh, Rapture Latu on keys. So Rapture Latu. Yeah, they all bring very good something different. Rapture Latu is like a like a musical prodigy. If you ever want to feel bad about how you are or, uh, at playing music, just play next to him. Cause oh he's yeah, he's great, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, he's he's actually just fucking amazing at every instrument. You yep. got Reese who's amazing voice i play with him yeah uh, a couple of times a week and lyrics. still does he do most of your lyrics uh you yeah share that load yeah i mean it, people bring different things to yeah. the table but he does a lot of them yeah. uh george plays as well um you see like just when you're playing just the girls are looking at him and yeah here's this thing where he can just stare at everyone at the same here's time them, uh, here's them fuck me eyes kind of yeah but girls. he's like fucking everyone without yeah looking, without looking cross-eyed yeah. like he's yes. looking at everyone but he mm -hmm. doesn't look genetically deficient. Uh, some people. <laughs> Beautiful man. Then some you got people. George, who's uh, well, one of the most genuine, lovely people to be around. and So groovy as well on the bass. He is, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, not even just with bass. Like, he wrote uh, that riff to God's soul. And, mm. um, he, yeah, he brings a lot. Uh, like I said, I think like him and I get over, uh, get over, get on over like genuine artists and stuff like that. Like people that almost believe in the songs a lot like blues artists and we all love the band i'd say if maybe if we, if we had a band song it would be the weight by the band it's okay. quite a fun one to always jam yep. and uh then you get jackson who's a fucking nice guy great guy um sexy looking guy mm. he's definitely the lovely looks of the band <laughs> yeah lovely oh have you seen him lately he's got the haircut of mum in the 90s it's all feathered and is that I right? Mean, I yeah. haven't seen him lately, actually. It looks like Mum with a mustache. Oh, actually, actually, I might have seen him at R and A. Was he at R and A? He was. He was at R and A, I think. I think yeah, I he seen was. Him. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, there. I'm he pretty sure seen, I've seen him. He would have seen him floating around, but he's good drummer, good solid drummer. Just a hell of a Love, team. Lovely guy, fashionista. He's yeah. got everything going on. Beautiful, love it. Yeah. Who, who does most of your songwriting? If you had to boil it down to one person, especially earlier on, would have been. Uh, Reese and George, that's not one person, that's two. But uh, <laughs> uh, definitely, as it's gone on, there's different like, people will offer their opinion and songs that have developed. 
I guess yeah, I realise that's a hard question. Arrangement wise, it sort of comes to the band and it gets jammed and it sort of works its way. It's kind and, of just a mutual this, agreement on yeah, how it should sound. be done. I don't think it's no. There's nothing that's. Uh, we never have the same sort of formula for how we write, but everyone sort of brings their own sort yeah. of thing, and then we'll critique each other. I think it's a good thing about being in a band because I've had like some solo artists and they put some stuff out and it's like you need someone there to be telling you that this is shit <laughs> yeah, <it's> yeah. <laughs> I, I what are it. you doing <laughs> well you got to be able to do that in a band environment don't you, you got to be able to say nah yeah you got to you got to have a certain element of yeah people like and we're not going to get butt hurt at each other about it either no, that's the whole thing it should be a, a comfortable environment where you can experiment on things and be ready to be told musically that's not good well you know Sexually. everything you know it, <laughs> Anything yeah, to expand the borders. <laughs> I mean, this room's good. There's nothing like band bonding. That's what the couch is there. Yeah, I thought so. It needs to be plastic Something wrapped. Something smells a bit funky here. <laughs> this room actually does kind of smell weird. It's a good thing we've got the window open. I don't know what it is. It smelled like that you before got we got... October. October, but yeah. What are we today? January 12th, 2018? Yeah. It's probably something... Dead. The year of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> the, the year of dreams. Do you have big dreams for the year? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 2018's going to be a good one. I'll tell it's you that much for It's going to be your year. Oh, yeah. You'll see my name in headlights. Don't you worry. Yeah, it's funny how people <laughs> sometimes blame the year. They'll be like, 2016 was a horrible year. It's like, it wasn't the year, it was probably you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah fuck, fuck other, that Other number. people probably had a good one. <laughs> fuck that number. Yeah, you get people, yeah, 2016 was right. shit. It was Every year, every year someone says it, eh? Like, oh, yeah, can't wait for the new year. It's like, new year, new me. It's like, oh, yeah. You can change whenever you want. Yeah, you should, <laughs> you should be thinking of yourself in, as a fluid, not a solid state, yeah. you know? Like, too many people have set in their ways especially like mm-hmm. when you get to sort of our age mid 20s sort of thing people are like all right i know these things mm-hmm. i'm all right with that i'm not going to learn anymore i had a good flatmate last year know. Yeah. Uh, who would sort of push you to learn stuff like she wanted me to uh, teach her some guitar so i teach her some yeah. guitar and then she taught me a bit of hula hooping and juggling yeah nice. and it's like always good to get those like have a go at those not necessarily those things specifically but things that put you anything out of your depth Anything yeah. that you're not comfortable with. You yeah, know? feel a little bit foolish from life. I think it's yeah. a good thing. If you ever get too comfortable, you know, you've got to step out and test yourself, kind of. Mm. Stress is a good thing, I think. It's like the, um, why some people like eating spicy food or like sweating or like, you know, like In moderation, as stuff with like everything, that. you know. Oh, uh, yeah, don't stress yourself out with work or anything like yeah. that, but, which I don't know about. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like stuff like that, there's definitely good stress in your life, and that means learning new things continue which to educate extends yourself extends to the whole problems thing right you know we all have problems that we have to deal with mm-hmm. but a lot of people will just try to avoid these problems won't they yeah that's yeah so everyone's gonna face a certain amount of adversity in their life mm-hmm. it's just about setting yourself up to be the best person to face that adversity mm-hmm. don't avoid bad things because they're going to happen you want to risk uh, you want to live in a risk adverse yes you know, like risk-free sort of environment you got to be set up so you can face these problems. It's like everyone's dealt a certain hand, like when they're born. You know, like some mm-hmm. might be socially better off, and might be something. I don't know it's definitely a big thing these days about uh, well, even just IQ race, as well. Uh, and yeah, IQ. Yeah, everything like that. Genetics, IQ, yep. that sort of thing. And you can say, "Oh shit, I got a bad hand." Yeah, yeah. Or you can say, "All right, I've got these cards. Yeah, I'm going to play them to the best of my ability." Like we've. You would have played Kings and Arseholes, the yep. card game. It's like, once you're the arsehole, you're not like, oh, this is nice. I'm just going to stay down <laughs> here and complain about m- me being the arsehole. You're like, I'm going to get up there. I'm going to be the king. Nice, nice. And, and it's the same with being in the middle as well. For you that. still yeah. want to go up. And people Always go up. And you've got to think of each hand as maybe maybe you're not going to be the king within that next hand, but it, you can go up one step yes, and you can yeah. go up a step again. Move, maybe up, the, that move up the ladder. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Maybe the next step is your next generation. So if you're setting them up for a better hand, then it's like, well, good. Exactly. Then they're going to keep yeah. building and building. So Your bloodline, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a bit of, um, you got to own it, I think. Like, I'm trying to think of the word right now. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Basic thing is just, don't be so quick to blame everyone else for your problems. Maybe look to yourself first and see what you're doing wrong mm-hmm. and see how you can be better the problems rather than being like, oh, you know, fuck, fuck 2017. It was shit. It came at me like a fucking <laughs> yeah. fiery arrow. <laughs> yeah. Now, what you don't want is like systematically dealing the same people, the same bad cards. 
that's yes. when you get problems. That's when you get problems, yes. Yeah, yeah. But out, outside of that, as long as you're playing your hand to the best of your ability, then I, I think you're going to be better set up and you're going to better set up anyone around you. It's like the whole idea with don't hang around with losers, hang around with people that want the best for you and, mm-hmm. and want the best for themselves, you know? Well, that are pushing you as well, you know? Actually pushing you outside that comfort zone a bit and not just letting you not extend your borders on life yeah i mean just <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know how extend to your borders that. on life uh just don't be complacent in the situation that you're in, that you're in you know like there's more for you to learn there's more for you to do and you that's never what know living's it about it's not about i think a lot of people get sold uh sort of things that they have to do with life and a big one now is travel like a lot of people see uh people on instagram and like they're traveling i have to travel and i think the other ones are the classic nuclear family of house mortgage Mm -hmm. pet kids that sort of thing um but you got to realize that it's not going to be for everyone and you're going to get to a point where you're like well shit there's a lot missing in my life yeah and that might be some might be some aspect of spirituality and i'm not saying finding organized religion or anything like that but i think there's something to meditating and that sort of yes carry on and like just set well-being and looking after yourself there's and that definitely sort of thing. things to learn from religion it doesn't mean that you have to be full Fully on religious <laughs> about it <laughs> yeah but um yeah there's a lot of great themes that come out of all different religions but um some more than others some more than others we won't go down that road we yeah, won't go down that road about it. um uh, but i what might was, set myself up what was the one that you want to talk about yin and yang that's the taoist right yeah, Taoism. It's yeah. like uh, I think that it kind of extends to what we were just saying, the whole order and chaos thing, mm-hmm. uh, the yin and the yang. You you want to be right on that brink, on that line between order and chaos. You don't want to be firmly stuck in order because then it's, it's too much order and your life's going to be too content. Whereas if you're stuck in chaos, I mean, no one wants to be stuck in complete chaos. But some people do get <laughs> stuck in complete chaos and don't try to get out of it. Absolutely. It's a downward spiral. Yeah. I think with yin and yang, uh, what I like to think is that a lot of the time now we're sold, like a lot of uh, things are sold to us is you want life to be the happiest you can be, right? Mm -hmm. But that's just one side of it. Like we don't get told that it's okay to be sad or anything like that. But like what what is a sunny day like this without a rainy day or an overcast day to that? No relative. You know, know, like everyone loves a Dunedin sunny day because they've had so, so much, much shit isn't. days yeah so it's like if you have shit days there's no problem with it like you gotta and you gotta embrace it you don't have to be like nothing exists without it equal yeah. opposite everyone <laughs> like yeah oh well, yeah exactly yeah. um yeah so it's like what's warm without cold dark without light all that sort of thing but yeah. like i think we're constantly sold that a happy lifestyle is what you're aiming for and consistently so which is probably not a great thing because you end up I with people that are like all right i'm a little bit sad or or further depressed i'm losing <laughs> yeah you're like why am i like this no one else is like this yeah. i've seen them online they're at the beach having a great time it's yeah like, yeah but they're living on a very thin sort of conscious level dangerous social media and that as well isn't it you always portray the happy side of you isn't yeah it? That's never what putting I mean. up like a a photo of you like crying <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you need to put one up of you crying but like sometimes going for a walk in the rain is is awesome like is, yeah like people would run through the rain and i've got to get out of it but sometimes you just got to embrace that you're gonna get wet yeah and like it's all right you can walk through the rain it doesn't matter yeah like, yeah it's i think maybe if you day. posted you you in the rain there'll be more artistic and more interesting than maybe someone at the beach with Counter their arms up like, <laughs> yeah who gives a fuck it's summer everyone's at the beach <laughs> <laughs> who cares definitely you're just yeah. another person back to the um oh the whole the meaning in life is happiness thing well I think it's the whole pursuit of happiness thing, isn't it, really? People you mean are that can be happiness. hollow or that? Uh, well, I think that, I don't think it's a good pursuit, the pursuit for happiness. Sure, happiness is great, but it comes and goes, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're saying, there's going to be sad and there's no happiness without sadness, mm-hmm. you know? Right. So I think like the pursuit should be for like purpose slash meaning, you know? Something that makes your life worth living, to be Yeah, a, and whether that be through kindness and genuine love for another person or multiple people or something like that relationships are a big part of that for sure or whether it be cultural technological Mm -hmm. they can give people life meaning Mm -hmm. i think what what i was going to say about happiness was a lot of people look for it in big events such as like 
right, I've got a trip coming up. It's going to be amazing. It's like, yeah, but what's more key is that there's continually small happy like moments of happiness going on around you that mm-hmm. you need to appreciate, like be it a like clear starry night or like a anything like that, like rain hitting your skin or something like that just small, small things. things or like a smile of another person yep. that you may have created or not the person that you created <laughs> but the smile yes or like laughter or anything like that like there's so Imagine many small incremental things yeah exactly <laughs> so don't like wait for like your next trip or whatever just there's wee things that can be like that's nice although trips are great yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they're good but then you get this sort of you get the it's not sustainable like, is it yeah, yeah, a lot of, and it's the same with holidays, and I don't mean like necessarily going away on holidays, but sometimes a lot of people, and I know I've been guilty of it before, is being like, oh, damn, I've only got this many days left. And then the next day, you're like, I've got less days left. Yeah, and yeah, you're like yeah. so conscious of how many days you have left. That you're Too busy really, counting down. Yeah, you're not really living in the, that present of enjoying yeah. that uh, time that you have, you know? And I think that's a that's always a thing that people do is not enjoy the time they have like nostalgia is a really big thing and looking back on yes looking back or like looking forward and it's like yeah, too well. busy looking at the bad side of thing in the present and then once you look back and you're like oh man i didn't really utilize that opportunity to the full and saying that like extent. the past you can learn a lot from just don't definitely don't don't dwell on it but like learn from it so i always hate that uh term no no regrets because it's like regrets are some of the best thing you have because that you should learn from them. If you have no regrets, then shit, what are you yeah, learning from? You know? shit. Yeah, you're just going to keep trodding along at the same tempo and just like uh, full stumbling through life and just keep making the same mistakes, which is, you know, that's mm. the past four to ensure that you don't make the same mistakes, yeah. basically. That's a... Man. And to be like, that worked, I'll do that again. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, well, that's what the brain does. It sends back an error like that didn't work. Yeah. Just try again. Like, man, I... I so many fucking regrets. But people are so scared of that error. They yeah. don't want that error to happen. They're scared of it. Yeah. You don't want that, uh, oh, the happiest days of our lives have been and gone, you know? Yeah. I guess, I don't know, if you want to trivialize it, you could say just have a shit time. And then when you get past <laughs> that, you look back at it and be like, oh, happiest days haven't been because that was rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. That, that's a stupid way to look at it. But like, you can look at anything in any way. Any way you want. Any way you want. That's about happiness, but I cannot think of it for the life of me. Let's move forward on to your Wellington. You're moving to Wellington in a few weeks' time ish, more or less. Open ended, yeah, so I'm not sure and <laughs> when. Yeah, but yeah, and you've got no plan whatsoever for that. You're winging that, right? Is that uh, correct? Yeah, hopefully hopefully get a job at some point up there. Are you looking uh, at, are you looking soon, at your music up there? or? Uh, yeah, we'll definitely play a bit. I, yeah. like the band doesn't. Oh, well, I don't want the band to break up. I don't think the others do either. But yeah. And obviously we have stuff to release anyway. So yeah. uh, maybe book a See how that tour, goes at least. And then yeah. we can just move from wherever we, wherever we, wherever we are Yeah. Um, from there. But yeah, um, play a few acoustic gigs. Just, but keep writing, yeah. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I don't know, considering... Always be a part of your life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh, it's got to be. I think it's, a, it's always been a massive part of my life. I remember looking... Dad got some uh, home videos digitalized. Nice. Is that the right word? <laughs> digitized. Put on DVDs. Digitized. <laughs> no, it's on a hard drive. Oh, yeah. um, DVDs get out of the past. <laughs> um, and we used to have cassettes of their home videos. <laughs> Yo, that's what it come. It came VR. from. Yeah, yeah. VHS. And uh, there was like, I think I was about three, just making my parents sit down and watch me in the kitchen play ukulele horribly, you might I say. Yeah. But they're the real MVPs for sitting through that. <laughs> The rhythm was there. <laughs> yeah, the heart was there, so <laughs> always wanted to do that. But yeah, I mean, there's always desire to keep playing. And man, I don't know anything about music, so I just want to keep keep going and, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. keep learning more about it. Because I don't know shit. Sometimes, like when you're doing a gig, the sound guys just start talking to you about all the sound gear. I don't know what they're on about. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> sounds good, bro. Sounds yeah. Oh, good. fantastic! I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It provides the best ultimate sound quality there is nothing quite like a good soundy though yeah when well that, yeah i know because i don't know what i'm doing when you have a mean soundy yeah, it's like well you definitely know when you have a shit one we've, yes we've definitely had that before we've definitely had good ones before the races <laughs> no I, no to get up denny brady i was gonna give him a shout out because he's the man and maybe he just knows refuel really well <laughs> he's really he's probably actually quite sick of us yeah but, <laughs> he's like these, these guys again yeah sweetman yeah um yeah, I don't know. I've always been quite interested in film as well. So my cousin works for Weta Digital. So maybe get a job as like a, just a wee bitch job as a runner. Mm-hmm. 
I'd actually love to write like a script, whether it be um, like a short series. I don't think I'd have it in me to write a long series yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Well, you definitely want to start off small at least and see yeah, how it goes. Yeah, or film, so one of those two. Yeah. I, I think it's like a life dream though, so I'm in no rush to do that because mm-hmm. I have a lot of ideas like I was saying to you earlier about, I don't know, as you get old, like, as the years go on, I guess, you get more, you educate yourself more and more so you get more ideas about life and yeah. I think that's what I'd like to do it on, just... Just so, the progression in life? Not the progression of life, but that just like my views of it and... I've quite a big Wes Anderson fan, so I'd love to do something. Uh, who's sorry? Wes Anderson. Don't know. Uh, director. Uh, would you have seen like Grand Budapest Hotel? It's probably one of his more oh, famous yep. ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like Moonrise Kingdom is probably my favorite film. Moonrise King. Time. Haven't seen it. I'll put it on the to-do list. Yeah. He's like super symmetrical and like just really, really visually pleasing. So yep. I'd like to mix some of that with a bit of weirdness and a bit of... Yeah. I don't know. I've got ideas in my head that I can't articulate. Hard to articulate. And I don't want people to steal my idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you don't do it here. Someone that's better than me. I, I suppose don't. it's just that starting to write down the ideas and actually putting it into words, mm. which are making it a bit more rock solid and, and what you're looking to get, a bit of direction. I think writing things down in general is something that everyone should do as well. Like just whatever ideas you have during the day and, and then maybe a few days later you'll reread them and they'll be interesting or a few days yeah. later you'll be like... Man, that guy's an idiot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Two well, days ago, me was rubbish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of a good thing. You want you want to keep bettering yourself from the day before. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to you got to be willing to chuck some ideas away. You know, mm. you can't just be stubborn and just hold on to all your ideas and think they're god given gifts. You know. Oh yeah, I think more so with opinions. I think. Yeah, right, yeah. Right now, the opinion thing Same is. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, you you want to be talking to people with different opinions from you, especially because that's where you learn. Even if their opinion is wrong, you'll be defending yours, and then you'll be able to solidify your argument. Yes. And you'll be able to self-reflect and be like, "All right, either I'm full of shit and really good at arguing, or my opinion actually holds weight." Both ways. Both ways. You might lose the argument, and then you can go, away, "Okay, maybe I should." Am, is my opinion wrong? Maybe I'll do a bit more digging into that opinion. Mm. Or was he was he right? And then you can be like, oh no, I think I still think I agree with my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's, but it's like getting that, you know, you learn the most from your enemies, don't you? Not enemies, that's a bad way to put it, but <laughs> those Opposi- who oppose opposition. your opinions. Yeah, opposition. Yeah, uh, they tell you something you don't know. They give you a perspective you can't see, and mm-hmm. that's that's, that's where you do your learning. I think we should probably say debate instead of argue as well, because you don't want to be yeah, arguing with everyone, because it or discuss. It, it can turn malicious. Yes, well, you know, it's just a negative then, connotation behind then it. Then it ends up being personal. But uh, I think that, that's very true, because if you're talking to someone that has a similar opinion to you, then you're probably, like, if, if both your opinions are wrong, then you're going to solidify your wrong opinions. Uh, Confirmation bias. Yeah, exactly. So dangerous. <laughs> yeah, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll be seeing the, the world through this lens, which is very distorted. And yeah. I think you get that a lot of... Uh, I think, well, we were talking about Jordan Peterson uh, Great man. earlier, and he talks about it. I've actually uh, been doing a bit of thinking about it, about like the polarization of the alt-lefts and alt-rights. So you get like, the, he talks about alt-lefts a lot, yes. and I guess he gets labeled as an alt-right for yes. not being there. And it's a funny thing that if you're not on their side, then you're on the very opposite side. It's two categories for them. Yeah. You're either with us or you are. You're a Nazi, you know? Yeah, and it kind of works both ways as well. But yeah, yeah, it does. I've actually decided... Uh, you know, like, right now, there's probably, maybe it's because of social media, everyone's quite aware of the pineapple on pizza debate. So people would say pineapple does belong on pizza or pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. Mm-hmm. And there's people in the middle that may like pineapple on pizza. They don't give a shit. They're yeah. not going to do it every time. But you yeah. get people saying, no, you can't have pineapple on pizza without realizing that everyone has different <laughs> tastes. Yeah. So it's like, as soon as you're like, no, no one has pineapple on pizza, then there's people that don't really care are obviously going to go the other way. Aren't they? They're going to be like, yeah. fuck you, I want to have yeah. pineapple on my Good. pizza whenever I want. Good shit, yeah. And that's what, like, even, like, the top chefs will talk about it. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's subjective. Yeah. Like, it's taste. It's how you see things, We're how you taste things. Yeah. yeah. And people need to see that as opposed to making enemies of people that don't necessarily disagree with you, but have slightly different what? opinions. Just developing these strong, strong biases against other people and coming up with this ideology, well, pretty much being infected with this ideology that you're right mm-hmm. and that's that <laughs> there's no mm-hmm. other questions it's this way or you're against me and yeah. i hate you <laughs> well i guess politically i don't think anyone's necessarily right i think there's people that are less wrong yes. you know yeah i was talking to my flatmate today about 
that's like, a good way to look you get it. things that get put through uh that you could you like sounds like a good idea and it probably is like the whole um, healthy homes which is going through in new zealand mm-hmm. where uh, landlords have to make their homes healthy yeah like, obviously it's a no-brainer right yeah. but then you get side of you get problems from it yeah that are like all unforeseen right. so landlords are going to hike their prices and that sort of thing there's going to yeah. be less available properties because yeah. maybe some get condemned for how bad they are because they're not healthy enough yeah yeah and then you get less you, homes you for people it, to live in yeah yeah so on so, so on yeah there's so it's like you got domino a, effect it's hard it? to weigh up all, all the things it's hard to see everything like this is right happen. You are wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that happens too often. And I think, but stuff like like conversing with people that have different opinions is good because that's 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 the only way to deal with it. You know, you got to get words from both sides and kind of analyze it. And yeah, you need to be able to cater to everyone and whoever's representing either side. You need to be able to talk with each other. And if they yeah. can't talk, that's when shit's gonna hit the fan. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't let each other talk. Yeah, they'll, they'll yell at you. This one aspect that they're so determined to change and they yep. don't care about the actual effects of what that change might bring upon yeah bring about sorry but yeah i don't it's hard especially now like everything gets forced down your throat like through social media like yes, tweeting people tweeting does. just one statuses or like one thing gets misconstrued or one thing said like i might have already said something that's like some might, someone someone might take radically yes and it's like geez i didn't mean it like that yeah. but like just have some context yeah have like. some context exactly that's it it's, i don't know it's just hey on that note we might have a quick break eh okay um i need to go to the toilet okay <laughs> there's no, uh, there's you've no got toilets here <laughs> you got a song for <laughs> no, us no, okay. uh yeah i want pure imagination by i don't know who it's by actually i should have figured that out it's sung by gene wilder and it's from charlie and the chocolate factory beautiful beautiful we'll get that on for you folks soon Back in tick. And we're back. What a tune. <laughs> what a banger. Pulling on the heartstrings there. Definitely a lot of nostalgia within that song. I think this is a good thing to think about. It's got that, uh, I love that line, if you want to view paradise, just simply look around and view it. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good line that some people do. It's like how we're talking about it's that whole small things thing. Yeah, exactly what I was talking about with happiness. Like, there's a lot of good going on, but you get you get bombarded by bad. Yes, yeah, especially from like news agencies and stuff like that. You're like, yeah. this is all bad. That's but what news is meant to do. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It makes people feel shocked. But um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> great film. I actually haven't seen an A to. I just love that song. But um, yeah. I mean, did you see the remake? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you about it though because I don't think it held my interest for that I long. I think I might have watched about half of it. Yeah, I don't. I, I haven't heard great things about it. No. I remember uh, when I was younger, obviously, uh, like quite a bit younger. My sister saying that we couldn't watch it unless I got her chocolate because it made her feel like chocolate so much. <laughs> so I'm not sure if she'll watch this. She'll be like, "That never happened." I'm like, that it made her happened. physically feel like chocolate. Yeah, and then you you watch the first scene. It's like all these chocolate bars getting wrapped up, and I was like, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what else do you? What, do you have human. a favorite childhood film? Favorite childhood film? There was I always watch uh, Space Jam when I was sick. Oh, you're a Space Jammer. Space Jam is a great film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. When of was that? that? that, was, that when was that? Uh, Early nineties. Ninety eight. Oh, late nineties. Yeah, mid, mid to lo- later nineties. Um, funny th- thing about that is that the space jam website hasn't changed since it was first put up so if you really? go to the space jam website it's like it's like going back in time it's mm-hmm. genuinely like you can almost hear the dial-up sound and, oh, your, and your mum yelling at you being like fuck off i'm on the phone yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Dial up. laughs> holy shit bro <laughs> yeah that was a thing that, that nostalgia thing. thing well that's like an idea that nostalgia is gonna um be the next really big market so you gotta like it's a good good place to buy up as old things that uh not necessarily yeah. like tangible old things but if, uh gary v was talking about uh, how he wants to buy up shit like friendster and imagine like myspace those sort of things oh uh, like yeah would have been bebo for us maybe bebo yeah that yeah, sort of thing good. like all those old oh, sites great. and make them good yeah. like market them in Bring 21st them century ways yeah, i guess that's interesting mm. i think uh technology will play a big role in bringing nostalgia to the forefront well it's a funny thing it's always there as well i I know i was talking about it earlier like not to look back but i don't mean 
like commodity sort of things you know but i remember uh, i don't remember because this happened recently but um i got my old family computer and it had fifa 99 on it and that shits off the chain so when you can purposefully uh like slide tackle people with your studs up and you can yeah you know, push people over that's hey what you want for long never played 99 no oh that's that's only the, got in that's FIFA the pinnacle 07. i feel like 90 uh there's a funny meme on the internet of like 94 when you can run away from the ref so he doesn't give you a card oh <laughs> so yeah i think i've seen that yeah, yeah. that's right that's pretty catch. funny that's crack up yeah fuck i used to play um the best computer game i used to play was croc did you ever play croc i'm super familiar oh it's like this little miniature crocodile <laughs> <laughs> you just go around oh it's just standard kids game man it was fun though it's a funny thing how it's like uh the world is it world uh world health organization maybe i can't remember who who did it but they uh they officially said that gaming for like an addiction to gaming is a real thing and that, that could get uh pretty dangerous with um virtual VR, reality and that yeah. sort of thing coming in oh I yeah it's, i know elon musk actually has quite a lot of opposition to that um i don't know I, I think there is you can say there's addiction to anything though really at the end of the day it's, it's all moderation but i think people are pretty quick to say that gaming is 100 percent bad for you but i think there's a lot of good that you get out of it yeah but there's more hours spent on that like that you could have been doing something else which would have provided greater benefits mm -hmm. yeah but so like it's I, better than sitting there, you know, dr drinking and smoking weed. Mm, debatably, unless you're <laughs> working towards a drinking and smoking weed championship. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, but people don't, I don't think it's the same amount of time spent. Like when they're truly addicted, they're living in the... Yeah, yeah. I'm not denying world. that. Which I actually heard a kind of like sad story about um, a guy that I went to intermediate school with. And he continued to get bullied uh, through high school and that sort of thing. I just heard that he was just home and plays games all the time which is super sad because you think back to being 11 and 12 and you don't really think of the weight of the comments that you say mm. will actually stick with people for that long but they obviously, yeah. obviously do to a degree and there's people that i've actually seen out now um that have said stuff not that i was doing it um but like, i was i was a fucking <laughs> asshole in school bro yeah I was a fucking bully so now like you like super conscious about it so when i was uh i turn around music teaching you'd You'd see it, you'd see and it. you'd kind of be like, "Hey, mate, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that." He's cool. He's just doing his own thing. Leave yeah. him alone. Like, it is hard because everyone does sort of it's that whole yeah. judgmental I suppose, character of people. Yeah, I suppose coming from, I was kind of I was a bit of an asshole at school to people, right. and having experienced that, and then seeing other people do that, I'm like, "Don't do that." Hmm. But I'm also like, I understand that me saying that isn't really going to stop you doing that either. Mm. <laughs> like unless you hold a lot of respect for me but it's more than just they're not going to stop off at just don't do that naughty go to the naughty corner mm. it's more like you gotta get i feel like you gotta get down to the nitty gritty with them yeah to kind of tell them how this is actually affecting them a bit more and maybe find out why they're doing it even so the whole experience is the best way to learn wisdom yes sort of thing it's a confucius yeah. quote it's like the by three methods that we learn yeah wisdom i can't remember off the top of my head but the last one is by experience which is the bitterest which is which is true like it's not necessarily saying that that, that bullying will be bitter but it kind of is but at the end of the day like if it's something super bad like you hear stories about the bully the bully victims committing suicide or something like yeah like that's the extreme of it that's the extreme if that happens then you're gonna learn your lesson well you'd fucking you know? hope so <laughs> yeah if you didn't then you're just probably a psychopath but <laughs> <laughs> what, what was kings like i went to johnny's i didn't go to kings. oh who was it a recent, of recent, oh, recent, recent rapture went to kings george and you went to air johnny's jackson went to kevin and i went to conversation yeah what was that like i think it was pretty typical guys school uh i think it was fucking awesome like it definitely gets a hard time as well like there's that whole every school has a stereotype so yeah, we're, yeah. i guess I, I guess our main ones were, were rich and gay yeah rich and gay yeah sounds sure. like sounds like a great life though so <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't see how that's ever proud <laughs> milo <laughs> yeah yeah we definitely we definitely won that yeah um and i there's definitely be i don't know it's a it's i'm actually just gonna hopefully i'm still here actually there's a hundred year anniversary coming up in february oh, all yeah. right for john mcgrashan but a, a lot of people i don't know a lot of people still like love the school and i still see them out um 
from across different year groups as well, and we like yeah. always always get on. It's funny. Is that yes, kind of brotherhood to it a little bit? Yeah, definitely. It's like we all had that time together. It's not saying we we're the nicest to each other at the time, yeah. and not that we weren't either. But all went through it. There's definitely the classic like <laughs> high school uh, sort of you all get bullied to some degree, especially I think I don't know. In New Zealand, we probably think of it more in a joking way, but maybe some people some people do differently take it worse than others. Yes, no doubt. And some people are a lot better with rolling with the punches, which is probably a good way to be. Yeah. You want that. You want people to be able to, like we're saying, face adversity and that yeah. sort of thing. But the fact that some people just, just aren't, not, yeah. people aren't equipped to it's cope not with that. Be, it's not going to happen. But, like, for but teenage boys don't see that. So yeah. they bully the fuck out of you. Yeah, yeah. And, oh. and kids move schools and stuff, and it sucks, but... <laughs> it's kind of a well, product of yeah, like putting what, a bunch of guys at the same age. Well, yeah, what can you do about it? And everyone's that? trying like to find their place. Boys will be teenage boys and yeah, there's no sort of real. You I think learning to deal with it is the best thing you can do, but obviously easier said than done. It's like yeah, everyone has different these different personalities that you're all trying to fit together or or like work yeah. out together, and they're gonna rub people up the wrong way, and yeah. people are more sensitive than others, and mm -hmm. there's and a lot of factors. <laughs> there's a lot. There's of a variables. lot of factors. Yeah. It's like a mini society, but no girls. But I think, yeah, I, I enjoyed high school. It was good. <laughs> it's the canteen. Do, do you ever wish <laughs> that uh, you went to a co-ed school? No. I had the best time. Yeah. I, had, I had a great time at high school. I had a super good childhood. Super, uh, I don't know if privilege is the word, but a lot of a lot of um, opportunities and stuff like that that a lot don't get. And hopefully it made me better. I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't really been analysed. I don't think. Yeah, but yeah. I think I think for the better. I don't know. There's always that. I don't know. There's the argument that maybe if you have less, then you're more driven to get more, and then if you have more, then maybe you can be complacent and entitled. But I don't. I wouldn't say I'm that. It got, yeah. It's just situational cases, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like you can. There's a saying for everything. <laughs> Every type of way to live, like. If when you have Rome. more, you'll always <laughs> have more, you know? If you have less, you'll always <laughs> have more. <laughs> There's some people that gambled a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is definitely situational. Um, no, I, it was it was great. Dad actually lives right next to school, and I could go home. You know, did you ever get that at your school when it's, like, shitty weather outside and the teachers would still make you stay outside? Nah. It was absolute bullshit. It's, like, the middle of oh, winter in Dunedin. Oh, kind of, actually. Yeah, and you weren't allowed inside. Oh, so no, I we had the hall we could go into. Mm. Yeah. We weren't allowed that. But I'd just go home to Dad's. It was just across the road. I lived yeah. between the principal and the vice principal. Oh. It's a pretty interesting dynamic. But that really good friends with the vice principal, now principal, his son, Campbell, who's a great guy. Shout out to Campbell if he ever watches this. But um, yeah, still friends. See, there's lots of lots of friends still from high school. Yeah. Um, and I think it's one of those things where I'm not actively, I'm not very good at talking to people when they're not around. So I'll talk to people when they're near me. But like if, when you see them again, you know, you're like, it's just like no time's passed. Yeah. So it's one of those sort of things. That's a good but thing. Yeah, always always good to catch up from them. And That's what you want. You want to be able to just jump yeah. straight back into where you left off. Or maybe a little bit of bullshit, small talk at the start. And <laughs> That's it, eh? Like, like how we're saying, the levels of sort of consciousness is le levels of chat. Like, you'll start off with the classic, hey, how yeah, you yeah. going? It's like, but you don't really give a shit. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just custom. But <laughs> maybe, the m yeah, as you have a few more drinks or whatever, and you, or you just start to... You just loosen, loosen up, up with a bit each more other and actually kind of say what you think about things and stuff. That that's the beauty of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. What is it like? So another saying. What is it like? Sober thoughts are drunk words or whatever. Never heard it. Yeah, it's like how you, how you how you say what you want when you're I drunk. I like that. You know, that sort of thing. Some people uh, take that too far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's some people that There's are. A line. Yeah, some people. It's it's funny how people. Some people are very unsociable drunks, but in a way they're drinking to socialize. So it's an interesting yeah. aspect to that, isn't it? The, the it's, uh, it's a bit of a double-edged sword there. I liked, uh, one, back to um, uh, Jordan B. Peterson was talking about, I think it might have been a Piaget uh, theory originally, but it's like the aspect of how as kids you uh, you compromise a part of your personality to socialize yourself. So, yeah, you know, like yeah. when you're going to school and stuff, you're going to compromise a little bit of yourself. Everyone has those little like, weird doubts and niggly thoughts in the back of your yeah. head that you're like, oh, this is kind of funny, but I'm not going to tell yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like you're driving and people are in the back seat. You and always like sleeping. You're like, I could drive off the road. They yeah, yeah. <laughs> killed. <laughs> See, I just vocalised mine, but uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> don't I drive with me. I think the biggest one for me was like uh, when you when you first moved to uni, like and mm. in particular in a residential hall. I found mm 
mm-hmm. everyone's on like a clean slate. Mm-hmm. Everyone's shit in their pants. <laughs> don't know what to do. Yeah. So we just get drunk, and then mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it's all okay. And now we're drunk. We can see who's who, and <laughs> yeah, cut all the bullshit facades. And some pretty wild personalities can come out as well. Oh yeah. And I think with but guys, see that it's well. like how we're saying at high school, but obviously there wasn't the alcohol that third form at least. Um, <laughs> Or year nine, whatever it is now. Um, you wouldn't, you know, like there's sort of people sort of trying to fight for their place. It's like the whole alpha male, beta male sort of yeah. thing, and uh, and halls and that sort of thing. You get people being more outgoing and yeah. trying to be like, who can do the most messed up thing? Or yeah, the, yeah. The stupidest thing. There's all like little like things, little titles that everyone's trying to get. Eh? Like, who's the comedian? Who's the pisshead? Who's yeah, the yeah exactly. Who can drink <laughs> the most? It's always a funny thing when people are like, I drank this many beers uh, or whatever. It's like, who gives a it fuck? It cracks me up, eh? <laughs> I remember a, a super recent, uh, this guy was telling us about how like his brother would drink like 19 beers, which I thought one is a super random amount, like round up. <laughs> <laughs> and well, two, like, 18 pack at least. Two, it's like, who cares? Like, man, it's not, it's not affecting how my night goes yeah, unless yeah. you're a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. But yeah, if he can handle his nineteen beers, then by all means, you have those nineteen beers and you enjoy them. But let's be real; like the ideal situation would be that you take two drinks and you could, you could draw that out over the, over the whole night because you don't want to pay more and you want to. So being a cheap drunk is probably a good. Be a lightweight. Thing. Yeah, so you want to be a lightweight that drinks slowly. <laughs> yeah, it would be the ideal like, drinking situation that economically at least. But know how to drink. I mean, that's what you become a bit of a veteran as you as you drink more and you know what. You know what you need to drink to get to the the right level, you know, in the zone. You don't want to cross that line into the a blowout. Well, you do occasionally. Occasionally yeah. you want to blow out. But you you normally know how to get to that right level of drunkness and mm. just be like, this is it. I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. <laughs> it's very easy to go past the zone. That's the thing, because once you're there, like, are you maintaining it or are you going over it? You're going That's over the, the cliff. It's always, it's always a tough one. Mm. And sometimes... Your zone, your zone varies depending on what you've done in the day. If you've done like a full on day of work and yeah. you have like three beers, you're pretty cooked. Like, yeah, it depends on your shit. food intake. Depends on the person completely. It's, it's like, hot outside. So when you get, if you're like hanging out with a cop or something, and people, uh, people will say, "Oh, how many drinks can I have before I drive?" It's like you just don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so subjective. Once again, it's like. It depends on like your body weight, surely how fit you are, how much you've eaten, like the sort of drinks what you're drinking, you're doing, <laughs> how you're drinking it, yeah, the route you get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't condone it. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, well, <laughs> just be careful. Yeah, yeah, be careful. Just don't don't drink. Dry. Don't have anything. I find as a as a better rule of thumb. Yes. <laughs> it, it, if you worry, it's crazy it. how it used to be just like so socially acceptable as well, and how women were actually just like allowed to <laughs> what drink dry yeah basically yeah, my mum was tell me like if they get pulled up they just that's oh you yeah, mean they're more likely to get off yeah 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 um i think a lot of people i don't think it was a law that women are allowed to drink dry but like, <laughs> it was like a woman are you? you're oh, fine at least you're, at least you're dry at least you're a woman that'd be that'd be murky water these days with the whole gender fluidity thing wouldn't it oh yeah <laughs> you could just you know, i'm actually I'm a woman a, yeah <laughs> a woman today yeah, I'm a woman today. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go into that though, because I'll get into trouble. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Um, <laughs> we'll avoid that. <laughs> but yeah, crazy how it just used to be so socially acceptable. Everyone would drink, drive everywhere. Like, it's funny that as well. But and people are really good at looking back at the past and being like, "You did that. You're obviously bad." It's like, yeah, but that was the social thing. Mm. It's not saying it's right. It's saying that we're smarter now that we know that that was wrong. Yeah, yeah. You can't condemn them for doing that. Yeah, we learned that we shouldn't do that. Yeah. Same with smoking. Like smoking cigarettes used to just be like a, yeah, like not a bad thing. And it was actually wasn't it actually said to be good for like asthma or something? Yeah, I'm sure there was a whole lot of aspects around that. However, they wanted to sell it. There'd be like uh, videos of like your doctor smokes camel or whatever it was, and um, it, was, it was a whole. All those companies were sort of competing to do that. Yeah. And I guess I guess there's always going to be something like that. Like what's going to be our smoking? Yeah. Probably probably sugar. Mum yeah. and I were talking Sugar's about this recently. Good, yeah. Probably, probably. Sh- good for that. Yeah, it's it's definitely. But also, also hard to tell. Who knows? Probably water. <laughs> yeah, fun, yeah. Well, there's the idea that oxygen. Oh, oxygen's real bad for you, bro. Well, people oxidate over time, right, don't they? And then they die. That's why you want. I eat a lot of blueberries. I, I've eaten two punnets of blueberries today. <laughs> of what blueberries? Yeah, antioxidants. Oh, no, I'm never gonna die. 
I'm never gonna die. <laughs> no, that's flawed science. Don't anyone live by that. <laughs> but, but blueberries are great. Blueberries, eh? Blueberries are great. I like the taste of blueberries. They're yeah, tasty. They're berries in general are good because mm. they're pretty low in sugar for a uh, fruit. Are they? Yeah. In comparison to normal fruit, like just apple, like a- apples or oranges, or yeah. I mean, you, yeah. You really want you really want your vegetables. Let's be real. Yeah, veggies are legit. Yeah, cruciferous. They veg- make you feel good too. Cruciferous <laughs> vegetables live off them and nuts. <laughs> and nuts. <laughs> and nuts. Yeah, live off nuts and cruciferous vegetables, and then you'll you'll. Be be but the problem is people uh, have cravings for stuff like alcohol and and sugary things and it's because they're so it's like you were saying it's <laughs> the classic everything in moderation yeah Ex- e- even moderation yeah even moderation <laughs> eh yeah. oh god life life <laughs> yeah it's always a struggle do you got any tattoos I don't have any tattoos uh, no. only because I don't know what I'd have yeah. <laughs> it's like how I was saying I keep getting different ideas so as I go through my life, maybe I'll have, I'll s- I have some solid ideas. Solid ideas. Idea. Yeah, but I don't. I don't really have. Yeah, any you don't want to be ideas. like, just forcing yourself into that shit, eh? Yeah. You want to have some type of, at least not regret it. Yeah, I don't want to walk out of the tattoo parlor with a massive chess piece of Josef Fritzl and be <laughs> like, no, actually, this is a bad idea. <laughs> <In> hindsight. <laughs> yeah. He's an interesting character. <laughs> mm, you want to elaborate? Wait, you know who I mean? Joseph Fritzl is that uh, Austrian, old Austrian guy that kept his daughter in the yeah, yeah. basement and had kids with her. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think it'd be socially acceptable to get that tattooed. No, definitely not. <laughs> but could be a little bit kinky. But sometimes <laughs> it's good to qu- uh, to make pe- people question uh, question their morals. I think that's what's great about comedy, and then super bad about social justice warriors because they start calling out comedians it's like the yeah, point of comedians is to push your morals and to be like uh, do i laugh at this or this is qu- pretty funny but like yeah i know it wouldn't be condoned out of this sort of arena so i may as well laugh about it here when everyone else is and that's almost the outlet isn't it that's the great part of it and then you get some social justice warrior say that's not all right yeah it, it's like you get a phone call yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's all right at least your phone gets Let phone calls through. Yeah, it would have been a good call. Live and, live and learn. Live and learn. Airplane mode next you time. S- you start it again now. Yes. I'm sure you can just put like a wee glitch in the video sort of thing. Yeah, no, it'll be edit. easy enough to edit it together. You Hopefully edit. it edits well. Editing pro. Yeah. How many tattoos you got? Three. Three. So the you big got, three. You got the I've aisle. got the one up here, this guy, and then I've got the wee. We've talked about yin and yang, but what's the... um? Sorry, show me this one first. Oh, yeah, I did see the... Old mate, that's Ducks U of O. Ducky, yeah, Ducks U of O. I had a few yeah. friends that went to U of O. Mm. Cole and Boomer, great guys. Don't I, know them. I, we, I'd be surprised if you had. They're a bit older. Still, still can contact Boomer. I don't know what happened to Cole because he sort of got off Facebook. So it's a. Oh, uh, there you go. It's yeah. t- tough. Once it they get off tough. social media, <laughs> eh? Uh, so yeah. That's the great thing about social media as well, isn't it? Yeah. Long term connections. Yeah, exactly. Long term, long distance. I've been. I've been just downloaded all social media trying to find them. <laughs> Get on Grinder, Cole. Where you at? <laughs> right at. <laughs> Hit me up if you ever, if you ever see this. I miss you. His thing is, does anyone Get know Dylan? Dylan? <laughs> yeah, does anyone know Dylan? <laughs> no one knows Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the? I was going to ask. What was the meaning of your Eye of Horus? Uh, the Eye uh, of Horus stands for attention. Basically, paying attention to anything. I would show you folks, but it's up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eye of Horus is just to pay attention. Basically, it's that whole mythological story of. Horus was the son of uh, Osiris. I think I think Osiris was his father, and he had an evil brother. The knight. Seth. Seth was the evil brother, and then Osiris was like too complacent with the whole culture. Like, oh, everything's all good, everything's fine. And then Seth was just like a bit of a malevolent cunt and just got him and hmm. took over the reign, killed him, I think. Well, and wasn't then, there the idea that um, every night and day like the, so whenever sunset and sunrise or whatever they'd have a fight and the, the winner was the night oh i'm thinking of ra versus um, oh yeah that's the gods i think yeah ra versus maybe it was osiris or something like this oh real i don't know I'm, i i don't, I'm I don't claim sk- to be I'm pretty sketchy on as well. uh, i, I, I hate it if i'm saying it wrong but i'm pretty sure osiris was the king and then seth was his brother and horus was the son of it i've played osiris. age of mythology like a couple of times when i was <laughs> an intermediate school and that's about the depths of my yeah um, knowledge on ancient I like mythology Egyptian. though. It's yeah, cool. It's super it's interesting. Good shit. It's funny how 
don't know what, really what's the difference between mythology and religion. It's just a bit of time passing and no one really believes in it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> totally, <laughs> eh? Yeah. That's weird because um, I always, I used to be strictly like religion's bullshit. Like I'm not reading into the Bible or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Just like had the bias against it. I was like, nah, mm. I'm not doing that. But I've always been like a massive fan of like Greek mythology, uh, Egyptian mythology, mythology, mm. and all those like Europe, ancient European mythologies, which is really just the same thing more or less. But it's just that there's not a following behind it anymore, really. Or a massive one, at least. I don't know. There's probably still some guys think out there thinking that Zeus oh, is running there, shit. There are definitely people that believe in Norse Nordic mythology and stuff like that as well. Um, yeah, but definitely yeah. good aspects to it in the stories. But you got to look at it as like you got to look at it as uh, figurative as opposed to literal. It's funny how people uh, cherry pick. Like Leviticus is probably one of the more interesting, interesting past Who's that? passages of the Bible. Oh, okay. Um, it's the one where it says like man shall not lay with man which, or whatever I uh, can't yeah, quote yeah. it word for word but um, religious fanatics are always pretty quick to quote that but I'm pretty sure in Leviticus it also says that you can't get tattoos like how many tattoos like people like tattoos of the cross or yeah. tattoos of Jesus I know Justin Bieber has one looks Isn't shit it? Um, it also says uh, that you can't eat uh, two ho- uh, hooved animals that don't chew of the cud so oh, pigs okay. Yeah. People eat pigs because they love their bacon. People eat shellfish. It says you can't eat shellfish. There it says you, you can't eat. You can't wear blended, blended fabrics. But people <laughs> wear blended fabrics. Um, so uh, yeah, I think the hypocrisy of it's the, the bad part, and probably the kitty fiddling's pretty bad as well. Yes, <laughs> it is. I, I mean, the way I see um, the Bible now is just not reading it as a literal piece of writing, m- using it more as mythology. Mm. and uh, taking themes from it rather than, like, believing that someone lived to, like, 600 years old and shit. Like, obviously, well, that's, Methuselah like, the was logical. like, 900 and something, eh? Yeah, well, whatever. Like, you know, Crazy. obviously, that's not possible, but that's you, not you the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, yeah, right. yeah, there's, there is that aspect of it to, uh, that if you're, like, reasonably educated and you, don't, and you believe it figuratively, then, that, then there's some good stories to take away from it. But the problem is there's too many people that take it literally and they create more problems i think than that than it actually solves and, right. I, and i think it's just religious fanatics i'm not talking about christianity specifically but they take um, it literally and condone it as well like people who are 100 percent against religion they use those facts condone. as literal evidence that the bible's all complete bullshit mm-hmm. yeah whereas you look past the facts it's still obviously good like a lot of our morals and ethics have been based up on the Bible. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of Western morals and yeah. ethics definitely have, but it's not like well, I don't actually know. I wasn't around then at the time, but you just got to look at it as a great piece of art as opposed to totally. Like, you got to I don't know. Don't, to collect don't the ju- stories. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> just you don't just listen to one song. You know, you listen to the library of them. Like a yeah, whole, a whole you don't just like one song. You like a whole range. Yeah, of them. so I think it's key to take in a whole lot of different aspects of life that actually. Don't cherry pick one doctrine just to suit your exactly. lifestyle yeah. and say that something just because something doesn't work for you doesn't mean it doesn't work for other people. I guess. Yeah, and half the beauty of it is it's lasted so damn long. Like mm. who? I don't know. Do we? Do we know when the Bible was like collected all together? All the stories because they're all different stories. And well, it was written. Uh, it's estimated to have started being written like I think it's about 150. Uh, years after Jesus' is okay. so, so 150, I guess we'd call it. Yeah, about. 150. Yeah, AD. And then, um, I don't know, it gets translated. It's King James. There's a lot of uh, different translations to it, and yeah. that does change the message to a degree. I think what's key is that um, you don't necessarily focus on, like I was saying, one religious doctrine. I think if you genuinely live a, a life that you believe is just and like kind and and you genuinely like love people and are kind to people and actually care about them not just people animals and everything and you you're on you're here to make the place better Mm -hmm. um to have the goal of making the world a slightly better place than when you came then hypothetically even if there was an afterlife then you'd you'd get into the better part of it yeah well it's going to create purpose if you're starting to if you're trying to live to make your life better and life for people after you better, then it's going to create a purpose for you, which will give you meaning and will give you, from meaning comes your your happiness, your actual sustainable 
type of happiness. I don't really like using that word, but purpose. I think is a good word. Um, yeah, I think what's key. I think it's kind of almost arrogant to say that you have meaning. That, that there is a meaning in life because it's like it's assuming that everyone's put here for a purpose. I don't believe that at all. I think it's key to give meaning to life, and that can be your life or other people's lives. But I think it's key to just think of it that way that everything you do will create a meaning. So if you're if you're making people's days better, like can just be just be small incremental things. If you're educating them on the world or anything like that, mm -hmm. and listening to them, mm -hmm. anything like you know, like I said give meaning to life and yeah yeah that, that's Cre that create make your own sense. meaning yeah it's something that's going to be more tangible within your actual lifetime you're not going to have to wait to die to find out what yeah. happens you know? totally i like that yeah. i like that note i think we might sign well, out there give meaning to life <laughs> yeah i think we might sign out there okay that's cool yeah thanks guys uh it's been dylan we <laughs> have one dylan. more <laughs> we have one more thing i have a i have a higher virtue test for you mate I call sure. it the higher virtue test. The higher virtue test. Let's uh, let's get it up. Okay. Have okay. It. So it's just like a two ends of the spectrum, kind of, and you got to just pick one end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like extreme. Yeah. Like I can't. I can't. Yeah. No in between. So no in between. Yes or no for the black or white. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Obviously, it's not. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see as we go. Okay. Um, the first one's just like OCD or untidy. So extremely orderly or unorderly i'd say unorderly definitely yo uh comfort or adventure adventure compassion or competition Com uh compassion sorry compassion yep. okay harmony or honesty that's a hard one yeah uh, honesty good group or solo discussion so one-on-one -on -one discussion or group discussion uh definitely one-on-one -on -one. i'm quite into conversations yes. with one person purpose or pleasure uh purpose but Debatable. <laughs> I don't know. I was actually talking to uh, George tough one, about that recently. Or oh, yesterday, he was saying he was talking about everyone does something for some sort of pleasure or payoff. It's like the whole mm -hmm. dopamine, uh, um, yeah, yeah, serotonin release in your brain. Like, yeah. why do you do it? But it's but I I I'd like to I'd like to say you'd like purpose. to say purpose definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm but sure pleasure's definitely got a good good argument in there. Well, I, I don't <laughs> think they're mutually exclusive. That's why, that's why I'm saying it as well. I reckon you can definitely, through purpose, it can be pleasurable. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There you go. I like that. Um, happy and sad or content? Content. Mm. Question or answer? Question. Power to the individual individual or power to the group? Uh, individual, because I think that uh, the idea of someone knowing themselves is more important because once they know themselves, then it's going to be more of an asset to society as the group. Um, Hundred percent agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes or no? No. Good. Good yeah. man. Hey, thanks, mate. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, get the one that's actually open. Jump, mate. <laughs> Slightly open. I'll give you a wee handshake as well, eh? How about that? We've been uh, Ruben and Dylan chatting away <laughs> with Scruffy Chinwags, Remedy for Curiosity. Hope you enjoyed this one. This was episode two, and hopefully our video went well for this one. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Like the phone call. Cheers, guys.